Hi, my name is Ruben Gobizi and I'm uh, the director of the Cleveland Shoulder Institute. I'm here to talk to you about frozen shoulder and specifically about how to recover from surgery after a frozen shoulder. Before I start with that, let me start with the basics. Frozen shoulders, I probably explained to you in the office, is a very strange disorder. I call it strange because I can't tell you where it comes from. Uh, most of the people that are affected are in their 40s and 50s. Uh, it really doesn't happen to my 20 year olds, it doesn't happen to my 7 year olds. And I would tell you 80% of those people, are uh, the people who get frozen shoulder, are female. So it's females in their 40s and 50s. Many times people relay to me stories about small things that they thought they have done probably a thousand times. Uh, but that particular time they started having pain. Or they'll say they woke up with it. Many of my ladies come in and say, hey, look, you know, I woke up with it Saturday morning. I don't know what's going on, but I am in serious pain. And, and the typical pain of a frozen shoulder is a pain where most people would say, most of the women will say, even at rest, they are, they're constantly aware of the shoulder. They, you know, they're not in excruciating pain, perhaps. Some of them are. Um, but they're constantly aware of it. And then if they move suddenly, without instinctively, for example, if somebody were to stop to fall and you tried to move quickly, shooting pain, knee buckling, tear jerking type of uh, pain uh, would, 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 would result. So that's the typical clinical presentation, you know, uh, adult ache that's constant with sharp pain with any uh, sudden motions or motions outside of a certain comfort zone. Typically, you'll lose rotation first, the ability to put a coat on or do your bra, forget it. And that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, when most people, 95% you know, of people get over a frozen shoulder uh, with just either time, which unfortunately takes between 6 to 12 months, but you get completely over it, I mean, back to normal. And it can't really happen or doesn't really happen again in the same shoulder. In addition, 15% uh, of the time that you have it in one shoulder, you might get it in the other, uh, but that's 15% of the time. Let me say it the way I like to hear it, which is 85% of the time, you, don't, you won't get it again. Okay? Um, so uh, that's the other thing. Diabetics uh, sort of define a separate special, quote-unquote, group of people with frozen shoulder. Only in the sense that, in my experience, 75% of diabetics get better just like everybody else, uh, uh, whereas 25% have a very persistent, very persistent frozen shoulder, which in my experience only res improves with arthroscopic surgery to release the adhesion. So what is a frozen shoulder? A frozen shoulder is an acute inflammation of the lining of the shoulder joint. We call it the capsule. Actually, the medical term for frozen shoulder is adhesive capsulitis. Adhesive meaning stiff. Capsulitis, meaning inflammation of the capsule, so it's a stiff inflamed capsule. Uh, but make a long story short, it's a stiff and painful shoulder. Um, and uh, I would tell you that you know the typical treatment, you know the vast majority of people I see, I probably see 30, 35 people a week with a frozen shoulder. The vast majority will get better with a cortisone shot, well placed. It has to be within the glenohumeral joint, within the joint itself. And keep in mind that uh, if you didn't hear the diagnosis of frozen shoulder before you got the injection that didn't work, you didn't get the right injection. All right? But if you got the injection and you got presumably and it doesn't work, then you might be one of the cases that has a persistent frozen shoulder. That being said, I would tell you what I typically will expect after a cortisone shot is that after one week, the person should feel less pain. The motion may still be stiff, but the pain, that searing pain with certain motions, should be markedly improved. The edge should be completely off. Over the course of the next eight weeks after the injection, I'd expect 75 to 80 percent of the range of motion to improve. So that eight weeks after a shot, if somebody isn't pretty sure that they're going to get better, I'd be suspicious that there's a problem. Um, if you come to the point in, our, in my practice where you actually need a surgery to get over the frozen shoulder, and trust me, you will know that you will know if that's you. You won't need me to tell you. Um, uh, I, I would tell you that. I kind of like the rehab to go something like this. I, I describe it as the Civil War surgery. What I mean by that is um, it's intense. And during the Civil War, as you may know, they did, and I hate to be gory, but I'm just trying to give you an absolutely crystal clear image of the surgery because it's true. Um, they used to do open air out in the battlefield amputations. They used to give the soldiers a stick in their mouth and a shot of brandy and say, here we go. It's kind of like that. That's the bad news. The good news is it works, and it works quickly. So uh, what I tell you is typically uh, you would have surgery, let's say today, 
Uh, the surgery takes about 10 minutes to 15 minutes at the most. I achieve full range of motion before I leave the OR. Many of the people, many of the ladies, I haven't had that in a long time by the time we get there. Then the challenge is to keep that range of motion over the next three days. And that's really the tough. If you, if you keep it for three days, despite or in spite of the pain, it's yours. You own it. Um, but if you don't, then you, you, you really risk the, you know, if it's too painful after the surgery, you really risk uh, refreezing, if you will, uh, for the scar tissue to reform. And really, it'd be a, a wasted surgery. Um, but the good news is one of the few surgeries I do where three or four days after the surgery, it's apparent to the patient that, oh, my gosh, I'm better. Um, the pain is much better and the, and, the, and the range of motion is much better. But it's three solid days of focused, intentional stretching, which I'll show you how to do. You got to do it. The first day is easy. You have a nerve block, so you don't really feel it. That night or the next day, you'll feel it. And in spite of that, you still have to have somebody with you to do these exercises that I'll show you how to do. And you have to have them done. If you don't have them done, you, the surgery won't work for you. Okay? Thanks. So here we are in our Civil War surgery, as I described to you before. Uh, this is it. The first three days, this is what we want you to do. You have to be able to do this, all right? And you, and you will. You will. Um, you're going to start your activities. There's three ex exercises for a frozen shoulder after surgery. You're going to start your activities, two of them lying down like Janice is doing, and one of them sitting up. You will absolutely need help. You will need somebody to be there with you. I always make a joke, which is only half a joke, and say, pop in a bunch of movies because you're going to need somebody, you and somebody else, to work this arm with you because you won't be able to do it yourself. But if you lie on your back like this, the first of the three exercises, what I call teacher, as in, hey, teacher, me, call on me, stop, and handcuffs. So here's teacher. You lie on your back. The person has you. Remember, the first day of surgery, this arm is limp. You can't move it. So uh, uh, you're going to need somebody to hold it. In fact, you're going to need somebody to do this for three days. You're going to have somebody hold the back of your elbow. And this is very important for a frozen shoulder. If you hold it up here, the person bends their elbow, you can't get real shoulder motion, which is here. You have the back of the elbow here like this, okay, where the end is. And then they push you all the way up, okay, especially, very important, because I won't leave the operating room until I can do this, okay. So you're going to have this when you leave the hospital. And they push you all the way up like this, okay? They push you all the way up like this. And that's it. This, uh, th that's the first motion. And they're going to do that a thousand times. How many times do I do it? A thousand times, meaning as many times as you can do it, constantly. When the block wears off, your friend, or you, if it's you, will not be able to sleep very easily. So they're going to, you might as well do exercises. So, you know, get some Red Bull or something and do it. But uh, make a long story short, the second exercise and again, very helpful to have them lying down, is stop. So you're going to bring the arm out 90 degrees this way, 90 degrees, and 90 degrees parallel, in other words, with the back of the bed or table. Okay. This is very important because the tendency will be to stop here, and you really got to get that terminal stretch so that the elbow or the, the arm is flat against the, the bed. And so 90 degrees. So bring it out, 90 degrees, stop. So you're doing stop, okay? Not stop. Stop, just like this. That's why lying down is very important. You're going to do that a thousand times. Cause, and you notice the position of the, of the forearm. I don't just do it like this. I don't do it like this, in other words. You see this? This, is, this would be getting the hand flat to the bed. But it's actually very important to have this rotated out this way because it stretches the capsule anteriorly and inferiorly, which is where frozen shoulders lack post-op. So you really want to get that forearm flat to the floor and the arm parallel or flat to the bed, okay? And that's really important there, all right? The last exercise, which is the handcuff exercise, is exactly what it sounds like, and it's handcuffs. You t you're gonna have the person stand or sit, and you're gonna grab the arm and try to stretch it up as high as you can go. This is the second hardest. The hardest is probably going out to the side, but the second hardest, or at least as hard maybe even, is getting the arm behind the back. And again, you gotta do it. If you do those three, teacher stop handcuffs, Three days, I think you'll be real happy with the surgery. Go for it.